Hello and welcome to your weekly Go No Go show here on November 2nd, 2023. My name is Tyler Wood. I am a CMT charter holder. And today, unlike the last month, uh, Alex and I are both in our home offices. How are you doing today, my friend? Yeah, I'm doing very well, thanks. It's nice to actually have uh, have you in the same country for a while. You know, uh, it's a global uh, investment opportunity. It's uh, we, we got to look around the map for uh, for where those trends are, and uh, certainly traveling uh, has opened my eyes to lots of opportunities around the world. Yeah. Uh, really, really fortunate, however, to come back home and uh, spend some time with the family, do a little trick or treating, and uh, be here at the desk as uh, perhaps we. We change the uh, the seasonal markers uh, here in November and uh, look for what could be a year end rally in the U.S. equities market. But let's start from the top level perspective, Alex, on this asset class heat map. Uh, just going going through the trends. Yeah, top panel as you know, uh, equities um, been a nice rally these last few days. Still, the weight of the evidence suggests a no go trend, but a weaker one. So we're painting those consecutive pink bars over here on the top panel, which suggests the trend is weakening, but still at the moment in a no go. So we got to watch out for if this is a relief rally or if it really is a start of something better into the end of the year. Mm -hmm. Treasury bond prices in the second panel still in a no go. Also have seen some weakness this, this week. Pink bars creeping into the chart on the far right side. Commodities, the third panel, this is interesting, commodities have uh, been able to climb out of that brief no-go, relatively brief no-go, but there was a lot of uncertainty. You know, you don't often see so much amber go fish coloring, mm -hmm. so there's a lot of uncertainty with commodities, uh, and now a weak aqua bar trying to regain some sort of positive trend. And then the last panel, of course, the dollar still uh, holding on to strong go bars. Prices moved more sideways of late, but mm -hmm. the trend's still strong in the dollar. I think that's one of the, the key benefits of looking at trends and certainly looking across multiple time periods. Uh, there's there's a lot of action that can happen in the intraday period uh, or even intra-week. Uh, here at the start of November, we're going to talk, talk a little bit about longer term uh, trend charts today. Uh, but of course, everybody wants to know tick by tick what's happening uh, at, as we are at this uh, this sort of seasonal inflection point. Alex, let's take a look at the S&P 500 first on a weekly basis, uh, just get a sense of uh, overall trend conditions on that longer time frame. Uh, we've talked a lot about you know, these last three months, uh, prices trending downward, but uh, from our model and that weight of the evidence, uh, still holding an upward trend off of uh, the, the breakout here in 2023. Uh, so on a weekly basis, uh, certainly this week's price action, uh, rallying strongly off of that 4,100 level in the S&P 500. Um, from from this chart, however, uh, and and I hate to uh, to be the interpreter, um, so far all we have concluded is a higher, excuse me, a lower high in that structural downtrend over the last three months. Uh, yeah. Coming out of the uh, the amber neutral uh, bar from last week's trading activity, it's certainly a a positive sign for the bulls that uh, that we're finding some strength. Uh, in price action. But uh, as you're looking at this, Alex, talk to us a little bit about the go-no-go no go oscillator and what we can read from there in terms of the momentum. Yeah, I mean, this is the key part. I think um, this has been an encouraging week, you know, don't get me wrong. But like you said, this is just a new lower low here. And mm -hmm. uh, we have some climbing to do to, to get anywhere other than a new lower high as well. But the momentum really tipped us off a couple of weeks ago, about a month ago, really, when it broke into negative territory on heavy volume. So we saw that flip to above the zero line that held then for several months as the go trend took shape. And then it didn't. So this is this was concerning uh, heavy volume as price moved lower and the oscillator in negative territory now and not oversold. So just in negative territory, telling us that the momentum is not really on the side of the go trend anymore. What we'll probably see if price is able to rally and consolidate around these levels is the oscillator rise to test the zero line from below. And that'll be really critical then to see, does it get turned away back into negative territory or does it break through? So yes, a good week. Um, so far, that's all we can say, though. Mm -hmm. And here we are midday on Thursday. It'll be important to see how price action uh, carries us through the afternoon and the close of today's session, mm -hmm. as well as uh, the importance of the 
uh, Friday weekly close. Uh, and and so Alex, let's dive down the time frames. Uh, let's get to a daily chart uh, just to see what today's activity has looked like as we are testing the zero line from below. Yeah, and this is exactly what we're talking about. You can see it's been an amazing three days, but we're quite far away from this being a new high. Mm -hmm. um, we've had a lower low, and if we are if we spend any time around this level or even fall away, then that's a new lower high as well. Mm -hmm. um, oscillator testing the zero line from below. We'll watch to see if this gets rejected or if it crosses back into positive territory, which it did here. But look at what happened here. It never got out of those pink bars. So this was another attempt, a bit of a relief rally, a, 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 a rally in a downtrend, right? A counter trend rally. Mm -hmm. um, it never got out of those pink bars. And then it rolled over, showing us trend continuation when it got back below the zero line. So we're looking at something similar here. We'll want to see what happens, see where the week closes. But if we if we are unable to really race higher, we're still looking at a new lower high. Absolutely. And then let's jump down one more time frame uh, to a 39 minute bar uh, just to see that intraday price action. Yeah, so here you go. This is on an intraday basis. Again, whatever your time frame is, these indicators will work the same. So if you're, if you're, um, larger time frame is a two hour chart then perhaps you're looking for buy opportunities if we've entered a go trend on that time frame you can see that we were in a no go on this 39 minute 39 minute of course because it gives us 10 even bars a day but you can see that we had this no go trend for the last several days that has given way to a go you can see that back and forth between the oscillator above and below the zero line as it flips into positive territory then we see the amber transitionary go fish bars and then a go trend and today's gap higher of course today's a strong day um, and on a smaller time frame you can see how we've actually just jumped above resistance so mm -hmm. that's a positive on a shorter time frame mm -hmm. uh we've, we've talked to a lot of analysts a lot of uh, uh chief investment officers from family offices who pay close attention uh to seasonality and uh as jeffrey hirsch uh and others have pointed out uh you know the the october low uh was very fitting with uh seasonal patterns uh, from history. Uh, here we're coming into the strongest period of the year, that November and December time frame tends to be when uh, when we see the strongest equity rallies. Now, uh, we're, we're not here to predict the future or to uh, uh, really incorporate a whole lot of seasonality into um, uh, the go-no-go -no -go charts. What we're seeing right now in this short term is that a lot of participants are perhaps tracking that uh, that same move. And uh, what, what will be key here for that trend to survive would be uh, breaking, breaking out to new higher highs, uh, seeing momentum resurge into positive territory on that longer time frame uh, to really give some evidence that there is uh, some meat behind this move. So Alex, let's, uh, let's switch gears and look at a few of the uh, macro charts that are affecting these equity prices. Let's move to the TNX, the 10-year treasury yield. Uh, we can look at that on a, on a daily basis first, just to uh, get a sense of of the recent action yesterday, uh, <laughs> FOMC came out to uh, say that rates would remain unchanged and uh, markets uh, rallied a little bit on that news. Uh, not a whole lot of volatility, but uh, certainly something that everyone was expecting uh, or priced into the markets already. From a trend perspective, uh, what are you seeing here for the 10 year? Uh, very much the same as we were just talking about uh, when we were looking at equities in that Yes, a little bit of relief, but still a higher low if this is where we stop. So in the sort of the flip for what we were talking about with equities, we've had higher highs and higher lows. And if this uh, becomes support or we find some consolidation at this level, then this could be another higher low. So trend still well and truly in place. Slightly concerning for the trend of the Treasury rates is that we have dipped below into negative territory, but that has happened a couple of times during this trend. So a negative one value, uh, perhaps we'd want to see it drop a little further um, if we were going to suggest that prices may fall deeper. Um, <clears throat> interestingly, there's, there's um, what was actually has moved already as we speak, but this was looking to be a doji. Of course, we'll watch to see where the close is relative to the open at the end of the day. Uh, but if these close uh, at similar levels, we would look at this as a doji. With the open and close towards the higher end of the bar, then we consider that a dragonfly doji. So that would have slightly bullish implications, which may suggest this would then become that higher low that we we're talking about. 
Absolutely. Absolutely. Visualizing the uh, behavior invest of investors is important. And even those candlestick patterns, just looking at uh, the supply and demand relationship between buyers and sellers. Alex, let's move on from uh, from the 10 year and let's take a look at uh, the dollar index. UUP is the ticker we use at GoNoGo -Go Charts. It's an ETF representing the dollar index. It gives us a sense of volume as well for this uh, for this uptrend. And what, yeah. are they, what an impressive uh, go trend it has been for the US dollar. Yeah, it really has. I mean, because, you know, we are very big fans of traditional technical analysis, given that there's nothing to obscure the chart because all of the uh, trend calculations will be done in the back end. This does jump off the chart to me a little bit in that we do have some divergence here between price and the oscillator at a slightly higher high in price, but a lower high in the oscillator. So I mentioned a little while ago that we were moving mostly sideways on the dollar chart, even though the trend is still strong. So go trend in place. The weight of the evidence tells us that it is a go trend and it is strong, but oscillator struggling to get away from the zero line and is back at that level. We'll watch to see if it finds support again. And if it does, we'll get trend continuation in the form of that green circle. So a uh, very important moment here for you, UP. Absolutely. And using the, the go -no go oscillator in that traditional sense of, uh, of looking for those divergence opportunities is, uh, is pretty key. Let's take a look at the chart of gold, GLD. Yeah. Uh, we've, we've talked long and hard about uh, how all my MBA textbooks uh, described gold as that flight to safety, the important asset class uh, in a high inflationary environment. Uh, seasonally, uh, just coming back from India, uh, this is the period of, of wedding seasons and auspicious occasions, uh, Dussehra and, and Durga Puja and, of course, Diwali, uh, right around the corner. And in that festival holiday season, we tend to see a lot of gold gifting, gold buying. Um, and I know uh, the Indian market does uh, impact the price of gold globally. Um, so seasonality for gold in terms of the uh, the festival season is uh, is right at hand. Uh, talk to us a little bit about this daily chart in the price of gold. Yeah, I mean, it, it's taken off recently. So a lot of people have been looking for that trend to take off, given the struggles in equities. Hasn't really happened. And yet mm -hmm. of late, we did see that real jump, that gap here. And then we've moved into uh, gold colors. Now, I'm just sort of throwing the crosshairs on here and I'm sort of seeing an important level that we're trading at right now, which is, which has been both support and resistance over the past uh, period of the chart. If you look at the, the crosshair going all the way back, you can see that it was support early on, then it was resistance. So um, if gold can consolidate at or above these levels, this might be some support going forward. Yeah, support in April, resistance again in uh, July, and here we are back testing it as support. Um, Alex, let's pop this out to a weekly view mm -hmm. and get a little longer term perspective on gold. Yeah, weekly has been very, very choppy. You can see this was the giant sort of um, handle part of the even more giant cup and handle that we were talking about <laughs> months ago when we were looking at monthly charts on gold. Mm -hmm. You can see how range bound we are. We have these really strong points of resistance from these prior highs, and we've been sort of trading within that range. Uh, ever since July of 2020. So um, a new go trend on the weekly, that's definitely significant. And we'll see if we can get back to test those prior highs. Certainly some room here. We've got positive momentum, oscillator in positive territory on heavy volume. And so perhaps there will be some movement higher here on the weekly chart. But we're going to look out then when we get close, as we did here, to those levels, whether or not gold can break through. Absolutely. And as we uh, as we know, uh, the more times a level is tested mm -hmm. right here, this resistance level one, two, three, perhaps we're going to make a fourth run. Uh, it's like my daughter at Taekwondo when she needs to break a board <laughs> third or fourth or fifth or 12th time might be the charm to uh, to finally crack through. Uh, but I also noticed that the uh, the dip that we had here in, uh, in this fall, much lower uh Shorter yeah. time frame uh, of retracement, uh, a lower trough in, uh, and certainly buyers stepping back in here yeah. at higher levels for gold, um, sort of constructive evidence. And Alex, jump that out to the monthly chart just to see the, yeah. uh, you know, if 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 we are indeed looking at a multi-year base or cup and handle, 
uh, than, than certainly breaking above this resistance level. And of course, it's, it's very significant uh, over, over more than a decade. Uh, if we were to get above that resistance level, uh, all-time highs for gold would certainly be an uh, extremely bullish sign for the, uh, for the asset allocation community. It's just amazing to see where that resistance comes from. You know, it comes from 11 years ago or 12 years ago, 13 years ago. Um, and it's been respected, you know, several times. So mm -hmm. as you said, if we do climb above that, then there really is nothing above us. Yeah, exactly. Let's uh, let's keep on the commodities track, but let's take a look at uh, U.S. oil and uh, see where we're where we're headed, given the geopolitical conflicts and uh, mm -hmm. and what's happening from a trend perspective. Yeah, oil's been chopped around a lot, um, and it seems to have decided that it's going to go down um, <laughs> for the for the near term. Right, we've found four consecutive strong purple bars, oscillator back below zero after this attempt to mm -hmm. get back to the go trend. So not uh, not much looking particularly positive on the daily chart. The weekly chart, Tyler, if you don't mind, is interesting yeah, because um, we this we looked at this for months, this downward sloping, meandering lower no-go trend that was broken. Well, look where we are now. We are testing zero on the weekly chart, the oscillator falling on heavy volume to test the zero level. So Given that max squeeze breakout that led us into this new go trend, this will be important here on the larger time frame to see if we find support. Mm -hmm. And the first retest of the zero line in this more recent go trend. Yes. Absolutely. Uh, would you mind pulling up our commodities sector rel map, uh, looking at all the commodities against the S&P 500? I think as we're, as we're coming into the end of 2023, uh, for a lot of investors uh, thinking about asset allocation frameworks, thinking about diversification, uh, certainly as the equity space uh, feels a little tumultuous, uh, look at all of the outperforming trends from these uh, commodities. Uh, obviously, we've seen some strength in the S&P 500 the last few days, uh, and we're, we're seeing those go trends weaken to the aqua form. But uh, all the way down that map, uh, looking at commodities, steel, diversified agricultural, uh, we've got lumber in there outperforming, uh, pretty incredible lineup of uh, diversification opportunities for the asset allocator community. Brilliant. Moving on from, uh, from commodities, let's, uh, let's take a look at the S&P sector rel map. Uh, take a look at uh, what's happening under the hood here in uh, in this recent three day rally, I think change Tyler really is the same the same uh, same securities or same sectors leading the way, with the exception of energy actually falling out of a relative go trend. So we're still talking technology and communications, which I don't know why that's amazing to me, but it's amazing to me that communications has been the one that's held on to that relative outperformance mm -hmm. uh, throughout the last several months. I, I that's to me that it just seems um, <laughs> incredible. <laughs> it is incredible. The Magnificent Seven certainly uh, holding up the the index levels. Uh, when we look at things on an equal weight basis, uh, we're seeing a much more damage, uh, oh, destructive activity. Uh, and so, from that communication sector and the information technology space, XLK and XLC are the two ETF ticker symbols. Uh, we're definitely still leaning on those outperformers. Uh, this was an important week. Uh, for earnings tonight, Thursday, November 2nd, we'll, uh, we'll get the earnings report from Apple. Uh, we at GoNoGo Charts try not to predict the future. Uh, we try to react responsibly. Uh, and obviously, it's the fundamentals of these companies that are driving long-term trends. Uh, but it's very difficult to understand which part of the fundamental uh, equation and, and certainly how, how many of those estimates of, uh, of valuation and growth uh, can be very subjective. Uh, we like to rely on price as a way to distill all of that fundamental information into uh, into something actionable. Alex, let's let's take a look at this sector realm map on a weekly basis. Yeah. Uh, as we're as we're coming into uh, the, the final two months of the year, uh, really clear rotation uh, in uh, in the spring of 2023 away from our cyclical sectors of the economy and into those growth equity sectors, information technology, communications, and even discretionary, although yeah. a little late to the party, uh, in that period of outperformance for the benchmark. Uh, we're seeing that neutrality in the final uh, final bars there for the energy sector ETF, uh, but 
Certainly, we're not seeing defensive uh, segments of the economy holding up or outperforming uh, the benchmark index. Uh, so on the whole, uh, this this sort of asset uh, allocation mix is fairly bullish, right? That we're still seeing growth equity sectors outperform. Uh, but as we uh, as we look around the globe at other equity indices, we can see some outperformance from countries that are much more closely tied to the commodity space. Uh, or or have much higher representation of industrials and financials in their equity indices. Uh, America is a bit of an outlier given the uh, the size and weightings of the information technology and the the Silicon Valley companies that uh, that we all know and love. So Alex, let's uh, let's move to some individual charts. Yeah. Let's take a look at what's happening uh, first and foremost with Apple ahead of tonight's earnings release. Yeah, a- Apple. Um... You know, we've been featuring this chart in some of the webinars that we're doing. Um, as Apple goes, so does the so does the index, right? We we kind of know that, and Apple is such a giant, and it's a similar looking chart. So we are just as we were with the equity markets, looking at a very important moment, and we've seen a series of lower lows and lower highs, and that's sort of been corroborated by what we saw on the oscillator. Now, right now, we are at zero testing it from below uh, and where we will see whether or not we get rejected here and roll back over. If we do, this will be a uh, a temporary go fish bar, perhaps just like it was in the last high and even the high before that. Mm -hmm. We haven't been able to get into go colors on any of these previous rallies. So it'll be very, very interesting to see if we do this time. But again, just like these other charts we're looking at, if we don't go higher, we're looking at only a new lower high, if that absolutely. makes sense. No, absolutely. And and let's take a look at this on the weekly basis as well. Yeah. So the weekly basis, uh, actually more of a concern perhaps than the equity market itself. I'm going to zoom in here a little bit in that we have not been able to hold the zero level on the longer term chart. Um, so we've had this corrective price action which was uh, triggered by the counter trend correction arrow you see here, the red triangle. We've been moving lower since then, predominantly with go no go trend painting weaker aqua bars. And when we fell to the zero line, which is all well and good and normal in a go trend, uh, we didn't get the support that we expected. So we dropped into negative territory and we're now actually retesting it from below. So a little bit more work to do here. The oscillator would need to get back above the zero line to be in line with the go trend. If it gets rejected, perhaps price might fall further on the weekly chart. Absolutely. And let's take a look at uh, Alphabet, Google. Uh, see uh, see how some of the other mega cap names are holding up in uh, in this recent equity rally. Right. It took me three tries to type Google. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you should type that into Google and find out how it's spelled. Yeah. How do you spell Google? Dear um, Google. So, yeah, I mean, similar similar story on the weekly chart, at least. We've had a big move back here off this last week's bar was a real correction. Mm-hmm. And that brought the oscillator down to the zero level and through it. But we're now testing it again from below. So actually, I'm, I'm looking at this chart thinking this looks better um, because we have higher lows and higher highs. And if we can stay above this level, this becomes a higher low on Google. And then we'd look for price to rally further and test this high that we just saw. So a little bit of a more constructive chart on a weekly basis for Google than we saw for Apple. If we look at this on a daily, then we can just see how much smaller that correction has been for for Google. You saw Apple really stepping down through a series of lower lows and lower highs and a lot of no-go bars. Now we're seeing uh, just a, we're just in a no-go here, but again, very, very important in that we're testing the zero line on the oscillator from below. And we've got resistance from this gap. So that's going to be a bit a uh, bit troublesome. That's a powerful resistance at the lower bound of this gap down. We, we came right away from it immediately so far today. So let's see what happens here. Absolutely. And let's pull up a chart of Microsoft here uh, just to uh, give our friends in Seattle something to uh, write home about. Another mega cap name that's... Uh, actually been holding up a little better. Yeah, you can see mostly sideways action on Microsoft and it's re-entered a go trend. And you can see that that's been finding support here on the oscillator at the zero level and that's propelled price a little bit higher. So price actually now higher than this resistance level here. So we're gonna look for that to climb higher and perhaps test 
the high from July. And if we step that out to a weekly, that's going to look quite a bit better. Um, you can see that we've got this corrective action after the counter trend correction arrow, but now we've moved back into strong blue bars and we've just got trend continuation on Microsoft on a weekly chart as the oscillator gets back into positive territory. Brilliant. Alex, as always, it is fascinating to uh, to talk through markets with you. Uh, for all of you who are watching this show on Stock Charts, thanks so much. Uh, make sure you also check out the Go No Go Charts channel here on YouTube, as well as our website, gonogocharts.com. Uh, publish our weekly research, our daily ideas, uh, a lot of educational materials and videos and explanation on how you can use these tools. Uh, and until next time, we hope you uh, take care of each other and trade them well.